is up, fellow YouTubers? Nintendo here once again, but this time I have a new subject for you. It actually almost became a new channel. Uh, this is the first episode of Ranting, Raving, and Ridiculousness, and of course I am Nintendo. And basically I just had the idea that I just wanted to talk about several things at once in an episode and not have it necessarily just be about video games but certainly include video games in there because it's obviously my biggest passion. So, um, so basically what I did was I just got like a few subjects together. I even wrote them down. You could even see that I'm all prepared. And I got my handy IPA here. I'll take a drink of that right now. Very delicious. That's one thing I can recommend. Uh, drink microbrews. Yeah, that's my first rant of the day. Drink microbrews, they're very delicious. Okay, so, uh, basically, I wanted to talk about my main topic, uh, is going to be, and I'm probably going to talk about it for a good few minutes here, is, uh, why do I play retro games? And this question's been asked of me quite a few times, and even sometimes in kind of a mocking way, like, why the hell would you play old games? I play old games because, uh, there's certainly a nostalgia factor in there for me. Uh, I grew up with old games, and uh, if you look at retro gaming prices these days, you can definitely see that there's a lot of nostalgia flying around. All those people that grew up with old consoles, all those people that grew up with Ataris and Nintendos and Sega Genesis's, Super Nintendos, they are all trying to relive their pasts right now. Uh, that being said, it's causing prices to really go up, and uh, that's another rant I'll say for another day. But uh, definitely people want to connect with their childhood, and uh, there are very many good games in those, er in those days, and I, I really feel like games these days are kind of not made as well, and we can look at some of the newest games out there as really reliable sources of that information, um, such as, what was it, Uncharted? The new Uncharted, I believe, where people were saying that it was not really finished. Um, yeah, that's pretty bad. Download content is a mixed bag. The fact that games are done, but then you can have things added to them, is pretty cool. The fact that games aren't done when they're released and then maybe they're kind of finished through download content later on is something that I cannot get behind at all. And uh, I know several gamers feel this way and several YouTubers feel this way. And that's not something you're ever going to run into with older games. I mean, the older games were just finished. There was no download content. There wasn't a little pack that you can add on to your existing pack and throw that in and all of a sudden there's extra shit. In some weird cases there were things like that, but generally once a game was done, the game was done. There's nothing else you can do except for maybe add a sequel. Or maybe make an entire game and maybe make a director's cut, which they did with, you know, like the Resident Evil games. Uh, that all makes sense. If you improve a game, sure you can re-release it. But having games unfinished is just business that I want no involvement in. Also, I'd like to point out the fact that older games are just, in my opinion, harder to make. It took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to make those 8-bit pixels look like a plumber in a red suit and a red hat. These days, with the graphical capabilities, you can make a red plumber, you know, a plumber with a red suit and a red hat in a matter of minutes because you have templates to go on, and uh, eventually, you know, even those older games did have templates to work on, of course, but back in the day, it just took a lot more to design a brand new character. Think about all the work it went into to make a game like Legend of Zelda or Metroid. Both of those games allowed you to explore in many different ways and uh, find your own way and a lot of these games these days are open world, but it's not the same. It's not the same as having to find certain things and go back, and they're not as well produced. The music, too. The music on these old games, they didn't have the hardware capabilities that they do now. So when you come across great music, like Mega Man 2's music, or Contra, or any of the Final Fantasies, and you're blown away by it, you have to also understand that that was made on archaic equipment 
And wow, the fact that they did such a bang up job on that is just amazing. These days, producing a soundtrack that's as catchy as Mega Man 2 would be a fucking act of God. But uh, it's not going to happen. It's just not. Games aren't known for their music these days. Um, sure, there are exceptions. Uh, Atlas games generally have pretty good music, and uh, there are definitely games with good music. But they don't equal Mega Man 2. They don't equal Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. And they certainly don't equal the mood of, like, Super Metroid. So, yeah, I think that's the end of that rant. It's just basically, that's why I rock retro games. They have a lot more going for them. They were, they had a lot more money and time spent into them. And I mean money as in, uh, if you take into account inflation. But, uh, yeah, it took a lot more to produce an old game really well, I think, than it does to take, to play, to make a good game these days. These days, it's, it's a fucking tough chore because everything looks alike and everything's hyper-realistic and if everything's hyper-realistic everything looks the same it looks like our world maybe set in a different world i mean it's going to take some it's going to take some uh good game developers and i think that's coming too to uh really make the new game stand out from this weird era we have where games just in my opinion aren't that great Sure, there are exceptions. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate, and I know I'm going to get a lot of comments that say, there's plenty of good games that are new. I have a few. Uh, I love the 3DS, in fact. Uh, Bravely Default is a great new game, but, yeah, generally I'm not a new gamer fan because I just don't feel they're made very well, uh, as opposed to some lower games that are made excellently. Excellently. You may knock Ocarina of Time's graphics, but you're not going to knock its gameplay factor or replayability. Okay, that's enough of that rant. I've been ranting and raving for way too long on that, but this is ranting, raving, and ridiculousness. So, uh, my next topic for you is a quick one. Uh, it's also gaming-related. We'll get the gaming stuff out of the way real quick. Uh, current game that I love and am playing the crap out of, that game would be Contra 3 The Alien Wars. You guys have probably saw the video, if you guys are watchers probably saw the pickup video where I picked this up. Uh, thanks, Jordan. Again, uh, awesome game. Literally the game that you gave me that I played the most. I freaking love this game. Uh, this is Nostalgia in a Little Gray Box. I didn't play this game for years and years and years and years and years. I played it at a friend's house when I was a teenager and uh, never really got to play it at all until now because uh, I just never really ran into a decently priced copy. And there it is. So, uh, great graphics, great music, made very well, it's complete, uh, <laughs> it's got an ending and everything, so I've never beaten it, but I know for a fact it has an ending, and that you can beat it, and that it's not shitty, you know, at the end of the game, it's just a good game all the way through. So, uh, Contra 3, highly recommended. Next subject I have for you guys, uh, music I am rocking. You guys probably always notice I'm playing metal in the background and maybe don't know what I'm playing. Some of you guys have commented on it. Some of you guys have commented on it and known what I'm playing, and I freaking love that. So uh, leave comments about that. I'd really like to know if, if, how many of you guys are paying attention to that. But um, right now I'm listening to something live. It's a, a concert. Anyways, the stuff that I have been rocking lately, unfortunately, was a CD because, and I love CDs, don't get me wrong, my CD player broke, so I can't really rock this right now, but uh, this is Dalsagoth, The Power Cosmic. I just got this fairly recently, and it was a pickup in my metal channel. Uh, this was a great score. These guys are an interesting bag. They kind of combine the elements of Cradle of Filth with, like, power metal, with, like, symphonic black metal, which I guess kind of falls under the Cradle of Filth category as well. But it's very well produced. Uh, this is not super raw black metal. It's not super underground and raspy shit. This is actually really well produced music and will appeal to fans of uh, newer Emperor and uh, maybe mid-era Cradle of Filth and older and mid-era Doom of Border for sure. Um, any of the symphonic bands, Old Man's Child, you know, they're pretty much probably going to like this. It's really good. I really love the dude's spoken vocals. You have no idea how much impact they have on the songs 
when keyboards are really going strong and the riffs are powerful, and then all of a sudden he starts speaking like this. It is incredibly powerful. It is amazing. It's freaking awesome. It reminds me of Old Cradle of Filth. They had an older dude doing vocals for them at one point, and he was just freaking epic. So, yeah, anyways. <laughs> These guys kick ass for those vocals, they kick ass for their keyboards and just very memorable songs and just well produced, very polished black metal. If you are into like Death Spell Omega and like Watane and like Dark Funeral and like the darker bands, this may not appeal to you as much. However, on the lighter note, like power metal wise, this might actually appeal to power metal fans, even though it's black metal. Usually those people don't crossover genres, but whatever. This, I think you guys should all listen to. Balsagoth, they're from the United Kingdom, and uh, very awesome. I believe they're from the United Kingdom. If they're not from the United Kingdom, keep an eye out for a comment down here saying where they are from. <laughs> Anyways, so next thing I have for you guys is just a quickie. Books I'm into. This is a comic book. I already mentioned this in a pickup and I already told you about it, but I haven't quite finished this yet, but... Get Hero. You need to get Get Hero if you like comic books and manga and, you know, stuff like that. Just really fun, awesome artwork. Uh, Anthony Bourdain had a part in this, and it's, you know, he just is one of my heroes. I'm sure I'm going to rant about him at some point. But, uh, yeah, Get Hero, very cool comic book, and a buddy of mine gave it to me for free, and I was just completely stoked. I need to finish it. So, ah, Jesus Christ. All right, so, the last subject I have for you I was going to say, oh, I want you to check out this documentary, or I want you to check out this TV show, or I want you to check out this podcast, but instead, I want to know what you guys think about that new Star Wars uh, teaser. Uh, it's not even a trailer, it's a teaser, it's been being torn apart like a puppy with a freaking stuffed animal, it is being torn apart, no joke. Jesus Christ, how many things can be said about that damn lightsaber? I think it's cool as shit. When I first saw it, wow, I was totally stoked. And then another little scene popped up, and I was stoked a little more. And then the dogfight at the end with the Millennium Falcon. It comes in upside down. The camera's following it. It turns around in the air. All of a sudden, you see TIE fighters shooting at it straight on, and it's this awesome dogfight. And you're just like, oh my god, I could not believe it. I want to watch that movie so bad. I went from not giving two shits about the Star Wars franchise to maybe wanting to give one shit about the Star Wars franchise to giving ten shits about the Star Wars franchise. I am so stoked about the new movie. Uh, get over the lightsaber. It looks badass. It may not be functional, but it's a sci-fi movie. Ewoks weren't functional either. Uh, Jar Jar Binks was a piece of shit. And uh, get over the soccer ball robot. He probably doesn't have a huge part. Uh, so just get over that. I thought he looked kind of cool rolling by. It's just like they show the lizard in some of the freaking movies, and some they show just random characters that just pop up. He's not going to be a major part. Get over it. It looks amazing. And people are like, oh my god, it doesn't even look up to par. It looks all grainy and shit. Dude, it's a teaser. It's not even a trailer. Get over your shit. That's all I have for you guys. Please leave a comment on any of these subjects or all of these subjects. One comment, two comments, three comments. Ha ha ha. Give me a like if you like. If you liked the video. And give me a subscription so you can see more of my randomness. My ranting, raving, and ridiculousness. So that's all I have for you guys. Keep rocking the retro games. Whoosh!